Hi, I'm Kelly Barham, and welcome to the July edition of Life Path. It's July, and we're halfway through the summer. And with the kids at home from school, backyard barbecues, and family vacations, I hope you're trying to maintain a balanced, healthy lifestyle. Did you get to make that tasty summer shrimp recipe we showed on our last month's show? Or utilize some of the travel yoga techniques on those long summer trips? Well, I hope they both made your month more enjoyable and showed that you can live healthy even through these busy summer months. And to keep you going on your pathway of a healthy lifestyle this summer, we have some great guests this month with stories you don't want to miss. Stories that will not only impact your life, but your family's and friends' lives too. That's why it's so important that you share the information that you see on our show. Whether it is a friend, coworker, or even someone in your own family, sharing the information you learn here on our show and opening their eyes up to a chiropractic lifestyle can change lives forever. Could you ask for more? And of course, should any questions arise from watching our show, don't be afraid to turn to your chiropractor. He or she can be a great source of additional information. And remember, as you go about your day, don't forget to refer people to your chiropractor. Now, for this month's show. I'm sure you're like many others. You want to work out, but your time is limited, especially during these summer months when the kids are home. Well, you're in luck. We'll be joining fitness instructor David Gaston of CreoFit as he shows us a very simple workout you can do at home and only takes about 10 minutes. I know you enjoy what David has to show us. Then, summer is an active time for sports, and soon school sports will be starting up too. But did you know that chiropractic care can play an important part in the performance aspects of the sport you or a family member participates in? To learn more, I'll be joined once again by Dr. Troy Dryling of Absolute Life Chiropractic. He is always a wealth of information. Then we have a segment I know you'll enjoy. Have you ever bought sprouts at the store? Now, whether you have or haven't, how about sprouting your own? Today, Christine will be joined by Dr. Clint Dickinson of Dickinson Chiropractic to explore the health benefits of sprouting. You know, it can also be a fun way to get your kids involved in growing and eating whole natural foods. So if you don't know how to sprout at home, make sure you pay attention. <laughs> and now for our final story, a story that looks at symptoms. We all have them, but do those symptoms really explain or help the doctor diagnose a true problem or cause? To help us learn more about the relationship between your symptoms and the root of your problem, we'll join Dr. John Murray of Murray Chiropractic Center. But first, there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding chiropractic care. If you've had back surgery, is it safe to be adjusted? And can chiropractic care even help after surgery? As we'll learn, surgery should never be your first option when it comes to your back. You should always consult your chiropractor first. To give us insight into why chiropractic should be your first choice and to answer some of the questions you've already had, if you've already had back surgery, let's join Dr. Ronald Gilbert. Twenty-five years ago, when I first started practice, one of my first cases was my front desk CA who actually jumped into a swimming pool and called me at midnight and said, I jumped into the swimming pool and I hit somebody in the pool and I hurt my neck. I told her to go to the hospital, but she didn't want to. And I said, okay, fine, meet me at the clinic. So she met me at the clinic and I looked at her and I took some pictures and she had a burst fracture of C5. She, in other words, she fractured her neck. So I put a special type of collar on her neck and I called the rescue squad and they came and they took her to the hospital. And there she met up with uh, a famous neurosurgeon who ended up doing surgery on her. He put a halo brace on her. But it was interesting because he liked the way I managed this patient. And so he then invited me into all sorts of surgery and we befriended each other. And uh, I was thrilled to see what it was like to see brain surgeries and neck surgeries and fusions and low back surgeries and fusions and we would work out together and we would talk shop about surgeries and when it was appropriate and what the outcome was. But I'm here to tell you that that's about the last thing that you wanna do when you can avoid it. And through chiropractic, many times you can avoid it. Um, surgery is the last resort. Surgery, and I've been in lots of, lots of surgeries and I can tell you they have chisels and drills and they're cutting through muscle and bone, and it's not the most pleasant of sights when you're in there and seeing what they do. And then you have to look at the outcome. 
And the outcome is, well, sometimes it can, and so many times, it will get rid of the severe pain and weakness that you have in, in where it's referring to, but you have to deal with the fact that once you fuse that area, it's never the same. It's never mechanically the way it should be with a, a regular neck. So you then have to really address those areas above and below those levels of fusion and make sure that that neck and or low back or whatever it was fused is strong, stable, able to perform. So it was very interesting going in with, with my friend and seeing what he said. And I remember one day I gave a lecture to a bunch of, uh, uh, of my patients, a workshop, and I said sometimes, and I make, made this mention to my friend, I said sometimes surgery is a cure. And I'll never forget, he looked me in the eye and he said, Ron, he said surgery is never the cure. He says it's a temporary fix. It's never the same when they've gone in there and they've cut the bone out and they've fused. And this is true because areas above and below those levels of fusion then have more stress on them. And so therefore, they need more care. Chiropractic is a wonderful avenue for that because when we look at the neck, we can determine whether that neck is stable or not stable. It's a very easy process. And we can do the same for the low back. And there are steps to take when, when you go to your doctor, like be evaluated as to what you're eating and how you're sleeping and how you're exercising. I kind of call it the five finger approach. You want to make sure all the pieces of the puzzle are working because if you're missing any of the pieces, it's never going to come together. So surgery sometimes is the solution to a problem, but prevention is a bigger solution. Now we look at this world and we look at, well, what's the fourth leading cause of death worldwide? It happens to be adverse drug reactions. And the number one industry in this country is the pharmaceutical industry. And in Congress, there's 675 or in the, there's 675 lobbyists. The pharmaceutical industry is a very big industry. I'm not saying that drugs are not necessary, but if you can fix a problem in a more simple solution, like with exercise and diet and manipulation to make that area function properly, your long-term results are going to be a lot more effective and long-standing than the short-term getting hooked on a medication and going down the spiral as far as how you feel. I mean, you can take a drug and it can cause stomach problems. You can take another drug and it can demineralize the bone. Um, we see that all the time. And so if you can keep it simple and eat properly and exercise properly, for instance, when you have surgery on the neck, you're cutting through muscle, you're cutting through bone. And when you cut through muscle, that muscle becomes weak and you have to strengthen it. Well, if you've never taken the steps to strengthen that muscle, it'll never be able to do the job that you ask of it. So in your neck, for instance, when your head on the average that weighs 10 or 12 pounds, when you bend it forward, and a lot of people do this because they're working on a computer or they're looking down and they're reading, you put a 35 pound force on your neck and upper back. You put a 75% stretch on your spinal cord, which doesn't like sustained stretch. So it's important to know, well, how do I work in my work environment so that I keep myself healthy? Well, it's when you're at a computer, you want to make sure that you're sitting upright. You want to make sure that the screen's at the right distance. You want to make sure that you do exercises like roll your shoulders and take a break. Because if you're there for hours and then all of a sudden you wonder why your neck's in pain or your upper back's in pain, well, there's reasons for that. And especially if you've had surgery, because then the areas uh, get a little bit compromised. So chiropractic is a wonderful avenue. There's a myth out there, or you know, I hear from patients who said, oh, my doctor said never get adjusted after you get uh, surgery. And from my experience, and that's 25 years, and I've treated thousands of patients with the surgical fusion. And I've, I can tell you, I've never, I've never seen anybody have a negative reaction to the manipulation. It's, it's a wonderful tool to start restoring the normal function of an area. It's a wonderful tool to make things, make the area smart so it knows how to behave. Because so you have all these like little control centers in the joint that tell it how to behave when you go forward and back and right and left in all these different directions. And when you injure that area, you tend to lose populations of those fibers that tell that joint how to behave, so it becomes confused. So hence, you have, uh, you have the people who cough, they sneeze, they reach up, and all of a sudden their arm goes numb or their neck locks up, and they go, what happened? And we take a picture of the neck and we say, well, it's clear, you can see that you've had this going on for some time. It's kind of like a car where you drive it and the wheels get out of line. You can drive it, but you know that wheel's going to wear. And you can't, I mean, you can pop a new wheel on there, but until you fix the alignment, that wheel's going to continue to wear. 
And I can tell you that taking a drug is not going to fix the alignment. Fixing the alignment means you get in there and you work it and you strengthen it and you get smart about how you sit and work out and you get smart about what you put in your body. Because once again, your body is a bunch of tissue. It's made up of blood and bones and cartilage and nerves and all these are tissues. And when you devitalize these tissues with poor nutrition, then those tissues are more apt to break down. Henceforth, the area becomes weaker. So you can take steps to prepare your foods better, eat better, and have healthier tissue. Now you can, the average, you know, the average person consumes at least 145 pounds of sugar a year. And that really strips a lot of nutrients out of the body. How many people drink lots of coffee, which can make you develop malnutrition and fatigue? Uh, how many people smoke cigarettes, which have over 3,000 carcinogens in them? I mean, there's all sorts of things that in our environment can affect the quality of the tissue. And this goes hand in hand with how the spine will function. What happens even before you have surgery or after you have surgery? Once again, I think it's, it's a better to take some preemptive steps to prevent that than go towards that. And only it's, it's not the first thing that you would want to jump into. The Spine Journal came out in 2008, which is a, a famous medical journal, which talked about chronic low back pain and spinal manipulation was right on the top as far as efficiency. So it's beyond contestation. It's, it's a very effective tool that you can use to make a difference on how you, how you feel. Now, I have had a patient, I remember he came in here and he had chronic low back pain. He had several uh, surgeries. He had uh, instrumentation, which means he had metal in his back and screws. And I can tell you one for one, uh, he didn't think that anything could be done, but he did come in on desperation. And when I took pictures, there was actually a loose screw in there. And I told him what his options were. I actually started adjusting his back and he was pain free. And the look on his face was priceless to see what it would be like to be pain free after all these years and being told there's nothing that you can do. So through manipulation, through good exercise, through good diet, these will make a difference on how you will do long term.